Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Powerful. Praise the Lord. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank so you, thankful Lord. for the blessings Lord. of the Lord. And Brother Dave said something about the uh, being thankful not to be in one of the countries where people are giving their lives yeah. to do what we're doing this morning. Amen. And uh, so many times we feel, or at least a lot of people feel, that it's a burden or it's just not mm -hmm. convenient. But we need to realize there are people that are giving their lives that's right. For the privilege and the, the freedom that we have today, they don't have. That's right, brother. So we need to continue to pray for them and to lift them up. Amen. This morning's message is entitled, Why the Devil Wants to Destroy America. All right. You might be out there today and you might not have heard the name devil mm -hmm. lately, unless you've been watching some horror movies. Come on. You may have heard it in church. You may say, you mean the devil is real? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Mm. No, no, no. The devil is real. He is still an accuser of the brethren. Right. He is still the thief who comes to steal. He's still a murderer who yes. comes to kill. Yes. He's still a destroyer. Right. Amen? Come on. He's still a liar. Right. Matter of fact, he's the father of lies. Oh, Amen? Amen? <laughs> He got the ball rolling. Come on. Amen? Yeah, he, did. he is a liar and has been since the beginning. That's right. He's the father of lies. Amen. And you might ask yourself this question. Maybe not. Maybe you've never thought about it. But someone said something this week that kind of got this thought stirred up inside of me. But why does the devil, of course he wants to destroy everywhere. Yes. That's all he's all about. He's all about destruction. Amen. But why does he want to destroy America. Did you know that America sends more missionaries overseas with the gospel every year than any other nation in the world? More missionaries to places like Africa, India, places where the gospel is... Men like H.B. Garlock, who years ago got on a boat and went over to Africa and took the gospel to natives that had never heard the name of Jesus that did great miracles in their sight and caused many to come to the Lord. Praise the Lord. So America sends more missionaries overseas every year than any other nation. America has the technology and capability of reaching the world through every electronic avenue in the world today. Mm -hmm. Think about these things. America's founding fathers mm -hmm. built a nation on faith in God and in His Son, Jesus Christ. Come on. I don't believe that. We'll go back and read some of their quotes. All right. Amen? America gives more help to hurting and hungry nations around the world, even though we can't afford to do it, than any other nation. Think about some of these things. And then you might not have to wonder why the devil wants to destroy America. America has a history and reputation of standing on the right side of the fight. Not taking the side that is in the wrong, but standing on the side of right and for the freedom of all people, of all nations. Amen. We have sent our soldiers into harm's way right. to free other people of, of other nations. Amen. That was not affecting us. Right. It was not affecting our freedom. But because they were burdened down under the heavy hand of some crazy dictator that had lost his mind, mm -hmm. we have sent men and women into harm's way right. to free those people. Amen. So we see things that America has done. She's been a beacon right. in the night. True. Why do you think so many... We have a lot of trouble here in the United States with illegal aliens. Right. People that cross the border without the right paperwork. And of course that's a big political issue. Right. I don't think I'm going to complain so much anymore about <clears throat> illegal aliens. Not that I agree with it. But I don't think I'm going to do too much complaining about it because if our country keeps going in the way it's going, I may cross the border to go somewhere. Amen. Amen? True. I might be in an illegal alien in Canada or somewhere. Right. Amen? I might go to Mexico. Mexico. 
we don't hurry up and get our president out of office. And some of these other people that are so far left, it's not even funny. Amen. So True. people come to America because it's supposed to be what? The land of the free and the home of the brave. A place where you can go to be all that you can be. Yeah. People in other countries have heard stories and you hear you hear these people that give their testimony that have came from other countries and they say, I heard about America and how I could be free there and how that I could practice my religion the way I wanted or how that I could advance myself. You know, I, I, could, I could do the job I want to do or I could have the freedom to just make my own choices. Yeah. So I risked everything, life and limb, to cross oceans, to cross the border, whatever the case may be, to get to the land of the free and the home of the brave. In the harbor in New York City stands a lady with a torch yeah. held high to the sky, a symbol of freedom. America has been the lighthouse mm -hmm. in a dark world, a light shining, a light of freedom, a place where you can come to have the life of your dreams. That's the way she's always been promoted. So it would make sense in a world that is lost and undone and dark yeah. that the devil would put a bullseye on a shining beacon light to destroy it, to bring it down. Yeah. That's why the devil wants to destroy America today. Amen. When you think about all these things, when you think about how that America sends more missionaries with the gospel, mm -hmm. carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ into other nations. Right. When you think about the technology that we have to reach around the globe to preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. For right here in this little Pentecostal church, every week, right. we go into nations around the world. In the past 30 days, Brother, Brother Dave, we have right. went into 70 nations with the message of Jesus, the gospel, in word and song. Praise the Lord. 73 Great. nations around the world. Where else could we do that? Yeah. Where else could we just, and we're not a big number. Amen. We're not a big organization. Right. But we're reaching a big crowd because America has the technology to reach around the globe with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So when you think about these things, when you think about our founding fathers, yeah. And how that this country was built because they didn't want to be under the thumb of someone telling them how to worship God. Yeah. And by the way, when I mention God today in this sermon, just so that you don't get confused, and I know most of you probably already know this, but when I talk about God, I'm talking about the God that created the universe. When I talk about God, I'm talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When I talk about God today, I'm talking about the I am that I am. Amen. The first and the last, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. When I talk about God, I'm talking about the God of the Bible that sent His only Son so that we wouldn't have to go to a devil's hell. Come on, preach. So it's no mystery today right. that the devil would want to destroy a country who has built the nation upon faith in God. Right. Abraham Lincoln said this. You see, unable, this is not Abraham Lincoln's quote, I'll get to it in a minute, but unable to do it throughout history by attacks, Whoa. by earthly enemies. Japan, whenever they bombed Pearl Harbor, and yeah. the <clears throat> terrorists that have came into our country and I'm beginning to think that America may fund more terrorism than any other nation. All right. It seems like we send money over there, they buy guns, come over here and kill us with them. Right. Amen? True. But unable to do it with outward enemies of America, he has decided to destroy it from within. Come on. Come on now, don't let me lose you this morning. Amen. And he's doing far more damage right. with his attack from within than he's ever done with any earthly foe that America has faced. Abraham Lincoln said this, America will never be destroyed from the outside. If we falter, if we lose our freedoms, it will be because we destroyed ourselves. True. Can I say that again? Yes, sir. Say it. America will never be destroyed from the outside. 
if we falter and lose our freedoms, yes. it will be because we destroyed ourselves. Amen. That is the attack that the enemy is using today right. on the great nation of America. Right. The attack from within. Yes. Billy Graham made this statement that goes something like this. I couldn't find the exact quote. In today's society, it seems that we are afraid of offending everyone except God. Come on. Amen. True. We are afraid of offending everyone except God. The Bible says in Psalms 33 and 12, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom He hath chosen for His own inheritance. So we see today that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Right. So on the other side of the scales, if blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, mm -hmm. then what is the nation whose God is not the Lord? Cursed. Amen. We can say today that cursed is the nation whose God is not the Lord. Oh. Psalms 9 and 17 says this, The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. All right. Now you might scratch your head today and say, forget God? How's that going to happen? Well, I'll tell you how you implement this plan. You expel God from the classrooms. Right. You take God out of the public square. Amen. You see, the farther removed you get someone from something, the easier it is for them to forget it. Right, brother. Amen. True. If you take prayer out of school, uh -huh. if you take the Bible out of school, right. if you take God out of school, the easier it is for people to forget. If you take things out of the public square that remind people that there is a God, the easier it gets for them to forget that there is a God. Right. So you take prayer out of school. Amen. You expel God from your classrooms, from your public square. Right. And the more a lie is repeated, the more a lie is promoted, the harder it is for the truth to be remembered. All right. That's why the devil wants no manger scenes in our public squares. Yes, sir. That's why the ACLU, I call them the Antichrist Lovers Union. All right. It's supposed to be American Civil Liberties yes. Union. Yeah. Do some studying. Find out the things that they defend. Right. They're not very American. As a matter of fact, the place the the, uh, the group was founded by a communist years and years ago. Mm -hmm. See, that's why the devil wants no major scenes in public squares. That's why he don't want the Ten Commandments. That's right, brother. Why do you think he threw such a fit? Because Judge Roy Moore had those big Ten Commandments down there in front of the courthouse, wanted them out of there. Yeah. Because he don't want people to remember God. Amen. He don't want you to remember True. God. If he can get these things, why do you think he doesn't want crosses? Mm -hmm. We have seen places where people have had crosses up and the ACLU would come in right. and they would take them to court come on. to make them bring down, to take down their cross because it's in the public. We don't want to offend nobody. And not just in the secular world, he's convinced some preachers. Right. You don't want to have a cross in your sanctuary. That might offend some Muslims. Yeah. You don't want to have a cross that might offend some, offend some people of other religions. True. So take them down. Mm -hmm. One preacher said you'll find no symbols of no religious symbols in our place of worship because we don't want to offend anybody. Wow. So he wants to take the manger scenes out of our public square. Right. He wants to take the crosses down. Come on. And not just the secular world. But as we go along, and I'm not going to preach too much on this this morning, but you can see it. As we go along, the world gets churchier, the church gets worldlier. Right. It's the blur. The line is so blurred you can't tell one from the other, and hardly anymore. Come on. He wants people to get used to the dark. Yes. Amen. Sure. It's time somebody turned the light on. All right. Amen. On. It's somebody. It's time somebody flipped a switch. Right. Have you ever? If you've ever had cockroaches, we haven't had in about 25 years, thank God, or 20 years. Amen. But if you have those, maybe ants do the same thing. Almost everybody I talk to has ants anymore. Uh -huh. Have trouble with them during the spring. Right. 
When you flip a light switch on, they all head for the cracks. Right. Well, that's the way it is today with devils. Right. When you flip on the light of God's Word, when you flip on the light of God's righteousness, when you flip on the light of God's presence, Satan flees. So he wants it to be as dark as possible. That's why he wants to put out the light of America. You see, America is freedom's front line of defense. And if he can destroy that, then he gets a big notch on his gun for the damage that he has done. Go with me to Romans, the first chapter. Romans 1 and 21. I'm going to read several scriptures here. Romans 1 and 21 says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. What are we talking about today? We're talking about the devil's attack on America. Why the devil wants to attack, to destroy why the devil wants to destroy America and how he is doing it. And it's not from Japan dropping bombs on us. It's not from the terrorists and they will do damage. I pray that we never see another terrorist attack like we did on 9-11. But they will never cause the catastrophic damage that this has caused. The attack and the decay of morals in our nation. The attack on the Word of God. The expelling God from everything in our lives. They don't want Him in the workplace. They don't want Him in our court system. They don't want Him in our school system. Someone said at this, some of the school shootings, they said, well, where was God? Somebody said, well, you threw Him out. You wouldn't let Him in. They kicked God out and Satan moved in and now we have children that are on drugs, that pack weapons to school, that get so depressed and so messed up with satanic things that they go into a schoolhouse and just open fire and kill a bunch of kids. Oh, I don't know what's wrong with man. Man somehow can't learn from their past experiences. If you look all through the Bible, you will see the fate of nations that forget God. If you look through the Word of God, you will see, you see, this is not a history book, but it does contain history. If you look through there, you'll see nations that have turned their back on God and what happened to them. If you look throughout just the history of the world, you will see what has happened to nations that have forsaken God. The country of Haiti dedicated themselves to the devil. And look what kind of mess they're in today. My wife went over there sometime. It's been years and years ago now. I'm sure it's not in, in much better shape now, if any. Raw sewage running down the middle of the street in a ditch. If you have to use the bathroom, that's where you use it. Cats tied up to stakes, fattening them up so they'll have something to eat. Voodoo. Witchcraft. A country that sold themselves to voodoo and witchcraft are reaping the corrupt seed today because of that. That's what happens to nations that forget God. Because that they, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The Bible says the fool hath said in his heart that there is no God. You can stand up on national television and beat your chest and say, there is no God. I'm an atheist. Well, the only thing you did was just declare yourself a fool because the Bible says the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Listen to what else the Word of God says here. It says, they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Talking about a nation that forsakes God, a people that forsakes God. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. Talking about homosexuality. 
And likewise also men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and in receiving in themselves the recompense of their era, which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Now what were we talking about a while ago? A nation that forgets God. They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. They didn't want to think about God. They don't want to think about the Ten Commandments because it says thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Because it says thou shalt not have any other gods before me. No wonder they don't want them on their walls. Half a Congress sleeping with somebody besides their wife. So they don't want them on their walls. They don't want them in their courthouses. They don't want them in their schools. They don't want them in the public square. Because adultery, the rate of adultery has never been higher in America than it is today. Amen. The rate of divorce has never been higher than it is today. The rate of false God worship has never been worse than it is in America today. So no wonder they don't want these Ten Commandments that say, Come on. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not get, oh, make Lord. unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. No wonder they don't want that. Because every other word that comes out of their mouth is a curse word that has God added to it. Right. So no wonder they don't want this in the public square. Amen. Man don't want to retain God in their knowledge because man within himself and by himself without God is wicked right. and undone. Amen. Preacher, that's hard preaching. I know it is, but it's time somebody preaches hard. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. They don't want to be reminded of God because when you're reminded of God, you realize there's somebody you have to answer to. As long as you can convince yourself that there is no God, then you can convince yourself it's okay to murder. It's okay to have a, commit adultery. It's okay to do every ungodly thing under the sun because you don't have to answer to nobody. You are your own God. You're your own boss. You're your own man. You're your own woman. You don't have to stand before nobody. But the minute you're reminded there is a God, you have to realize, oh, one day I'm going to have to stand before a just and a holy God and give an account for what I've done. One day in America, we'll stand before a just and a holy God who's, who, who has sanctity on life and stand before Him and give an account for the millions of aborted babies that she kills every day. Come on, preach. They didn't want to retain God in their knowledge. That's right, brother. They wanted to forget about God because when you forget there's a God... You can do whatever you want to do, Brother Rodney. You don't have to worry about it. You have seared your conscience with a rod of hot iron. You've been turned over to a reprobate mind. God is a loving God. But sooner or later, unless you come by way of the cross, you will stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And you will be judged. Amen. According to your Everything. works, according to your sins. So the Bible says in the book of Romans that they did not want to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, listen to this, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, right. deceit, malignity, Whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, on, inventors bro. of evil, on, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Yeah. With all oh, disobedient to parents. Uh -huh. Amen. Disobedient to parents. Come on. We don't have that so much anymore because we don't have any parents that try to make their kids mind. That's right. Amen. Brother. They just go their way and let their kids go their way. Right. Remember the day we was talking about this last night? Amen. Where we live there. They, it seems like they just turn their kids loose. Amen. They do. You know. True. Maybe if they ain't in by 10 o'clock, they might get to worry about them, look outside and holler. Yeah. They just turn them loose. Right. I don't know where they're at. You got it. Amen. That's true. One little fella asked me, could he have something to drink? I said, don't y'all have anything to drink at y'all's house? And he said, I can't go home. If I do, they said, I can't come back out. <laughs> I can believe it. Amen. Yeah, Saw some kids come on one day after school. They couldn't get in the house. Mm -hmm. Mom and Daddy's still in the bed. All right. Three o'clock in the afternoon. Doors locked. Kids can't get in. Come on. And you wonder why right. America's in the shape she's in today. Amen. Amen. That's true. 
They don't want to retain God in their knowledge because when you go to thinking about God, you go to thinking about what you've done. And when you go to think about what you've done, you go to thinking about judgment. Right. Because sooner or later, all of us are going to stand before a just and a holy God. Amen. That's the truth. It says, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Yeah. Oh, let me back up to verse 31. I skipped something there. It says, without understanding. Mm -hmm. Covenant breakers. You can't take anybody's word anymore for nothing anymore. Right. Brother Bill Casey told me one time, he said that years ago he went to the bank to get some money. He just shook the banker's hand. Yeah. Told him I'll be in next month to make my payment. Didn't sign paper. Can't even get on paid anymore if you sign the paper. Without natural affection, uh -huh. implacable, unmerciful, no mercy. Right. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, Come on. not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That's right. Oh my. Talking about a nation that turns its back on God. Why the attack on marriage? Why the push for homosexuality mm. by the devil? Yeah. Because it strikes at the very foundation of the family. Right. Why the attack by way of abortion? Come on. Why kill unborn babies? Yeah. i got a question for you today. What better way to kill God's future prophets and preachers and prayer warriors than in the womb of her mother? Amen. Amen? Amen. You say, oh, I just don't believe that. The Bible says that God spoke these words to Jeremiah. Before I formed thee in the, in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. We don't have to tie our prophets and preachers to a stake and kill them when they're adults. We're slaughtering them before they ever come out of the womb. Amen. Amen. You got it. How many preachers have been killed? How many prophets have been killed? How many prayer warriors have been killed? All because they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. All because they want to forget God. Come on, brother Billy. Come on. How many prophets have been slaughtered? Yes, sir. By way of abortion. Amen. Correct. Say, preacher, well, I just don't agree with the way you look at abortion. If you're a Bible-believing Christian, you can't help but believe the way I believe right. about abortion. That's true. Read the book. Amen. There's no excuse for it. Yes, sir. That's true. Read the book. Jeremiah was ordained a prophet uh -huh. before he was formed in his mother's womb. All right. So why the attack? Why the attack on marriage? Because the family... Is part of the fabric that makes up this, this nation. Mm. Why the attack by way of abortion? To kill, to steal, yeah, sure. to destroy. Why the attack on our schools and our children? Oh, why remove the Bible and prayer? Huh? I'll tell you why. Because he wants the next generation to be a godless generation. Amen. Amen? Because as John Wesley said, what one generation tolerates, the next generation will embrace. A godless society is a society without morals. A godless society is a society without self-restraint, Brother Sleese. A godless society is a society without peace, without hope, without freedom. And that is the road that America is on today. Amen. On the road to becoming a godless nation. Amen. And all nations that forget God will be turned into hell. Yes, sir. Guaranteed. Why the attack on the Word of God? Oh, my. Mm. As we shouldn't even have to wonder that. Amen. It's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Right, right. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. True. No wonder he's been attacking the words since the Garden of Eden. Amen. The more he can water it down, the more he can compromise it, the more he can get preachers to do the same, he can attack the very foundation of your spiritual walk with God. He can attack you right in the depths of your spirit if he can attack the Word of God. Oh my goodness. George Washington said this, It is impossible to rightly govern a nation without God and the Bible. All right. 
Trump. Oh, did you hear that? No wonder we owe China so much money. No wonder our rulers in Washington, our, our leaders in Washington, cannot lead this country in the right direction. Because they've cast out God and they've cast out the Bible. And as George Washington said, it is impossible to yeah. rightly yeah. govern a nation without God yeah. and without the Holy Word. Mm -hmm. Mom, the father they of our country said that. Amen. They decided not to retain God in their knowledge. Right. The nation that forgets God, so if the devil can get America to forget God, right. he can destroy her, not from without but from within, right. with no morals, no standards, no regard for life. Right. We've got teenage girls that get pregnant without anybody ever knowing right. and have the baby without anybody ever knowing yeah. and put the baby in a garbage bag and throw it in a dumpster somewhere without anybody ever knowing and right. treat their babies like dogs or something. No morals. Right. Why? Because we've allowed the devil to move in our schoolhouses. We've allowed the devil to move in our homes. We've allowed the going to do it. We're learning today yeah. how he's doing it. Amen. We're learning today how he's doing it. That's right, brother. George Washington spoke those words years ago, yet our nation has decided that the Bible is out of date mm -hmm. and that there is no need for God, no room for God, or maybe there just is no God at all. Mm. Now many are deciding that our Constitution is out of date. Amen? Yeah. They're deciding that, well, you know, the Constitution that was written a long time ago. Yeah. Things have changed. Right. That's the arguments they use about, you know, freedom to bear arms. Right. Well, things have changed True. since then. Right. Freedom, our freedom to worship that right. is guaranteed in there. Well, things have changed yeah. since then. Oh, my goodness. It's outdated. Help. A nation that forgets God will be turned into hell. Yes, sir. Little by little, chipping away at our freedom to worship and to follow our own convictions as set forth in the Constitution. If America continues down the road that she is on, we will either see her completely crumble or at the very least, she will become a socialist nation that suppresses religious freedoms. And you can sit here today, you can sit out there today, whether you're listening by radio or you're watching this video, and you can shake your head and say, oh, this is America. That'll never happen. Mm -hmm. If you could turn back the pages and ask our founding fathers if they had any idea America would be in the shape she's in today, they would say, oh, that'll never happen. Mm -hmm. 60 years ago. Talk to someone from 60 years ago. Mm -hmm. Come on, brother. And ask them if they ever believed there'd be a day like yeah. there is today in America. Yeah. And they would say, no, I never would have yeah. believed yeah. it. Amen. So you can just sit there. You can stick your head in the sand with your tail in the air like an ostrich and not believe it's ever going to happen. But I'm telling you, unless somebody stands up for the right and shuns the wrong, unless we have some old-fashioned Bible-believing yeah. preachers that still have the guts to say, Thus saith God! Yeah, come on, brother. Then there is no hope for America because the only hope is not going to be found in the Democratic Party. The hope for America is not going to be found in the Republican Party. The hope for America is not going to be found in a new president as much as I don't like the one we got. Amen. The hope for America lies between these pages, between the covers of this old book, Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. From Genesis to Revelation, this is the hope for America. Yeah. This is the hope for America. Jesus, He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. I passed, out a, I passed out a CD some time ago by Paul Harvey. I'm going to read you a few of the things that he said in case you didn't listen to it or those of you out there that have never heard it before. This was written sometime back in the 60s and it's called If I Were the Devil Yeah. by Paul Harvey and I'm trying to close. He says, If I were the prince of darkness, I would want to engulf the world in darkness. 
and I would have one third of the real estate and four fifths of, pop of the population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had the ripest apple on the tree. So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. Mm. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I, were, as I whispered to Eve, mm -hmm. do as you please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. think about how far back this goes. Mm -hmm. And think about the condition we're in today. Oh. I would teach the children. I would whisper to them that bi the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man made that man made God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is just square. I'd educate authors on how to make lurid literature exciting so that everything else just seemed boring and dull. I'd threaten television with dirtier movies. Well, some commercials. Yeah. Some commercials you don't even want to see, you let your kids see. True. Amen? That's the truth. Anybody ever remember the Dick Van Dyke show? Yeah. You ever seen the scene inside their bedroom? Two separate beds. Yeah. It was against the rules of the whoever was over the television thing. That, to, to even show who was supposed to be a husband and wife in the same bed. Mm -hmm. So they had two half beds there. On. One for him, one for her. Come on, preach. Now they not only let them get in bed together, but well, they're naked. That's doing true. whatever. That's true. And Paul Harvey says back then that I would threaten television with dirtier movies. That's right. Listen to this. All oh, this hit home with me. Listen to this. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. We have never lived in a day where there were more people hooked on prescription medicine than we live today. Everybody you talk to is on some kind of prescription. And I ain't talking about blood pressure and that kind of stuff there either. I'm talking about they can't sleep without it. They can't get up without it. Their nerves are a mess without it. Right. And I'm not running you down if you're on medicine. I'm just telling you that a lot of people are on it that never needed it to begin with. Amen. And now they're hooked on it. That's right. I will tranquilize the rest of them with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, nations at war with themselves, until each in its turn was consumed of the other. You hear that? If I were the devil, I'd encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect discipline. Do you hear that, Brother Dave? I would encourage schools to neglect discipline, to let their emotions run wild. Yes. And believe you me, Paul Harvey said, before you know it, you'd have to have drug sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, our prisons would be overflowing. If I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, then from the houses of Congress, that's what I'd do if I was the devil. In his own, in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys, girls, and church money if I were the devil. This is how I would destroy America. That's exactly what, we've, what we're reading from the Word of God today. And what we're seeing in our newspapers. You got it. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give it to those who want it. Mm -hmm. My goodness. That's the slogan of our president, isn't it? Come on. You got it. Amen. You got it. Until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. What do you bet that I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as a way to get rich? Paul Harvey. This is before they had these big lotteries and before they had the gambling boats in our neck of the woods. I would caution people against extremes in hard work, patriotism, moral conduct, and religion. You don't want to get too overboard on that stuff. I would convince the youth that marriage is old-fashioned, but swinging is more fun, or shacking up if you want to call it that, so we understand what that means. That what you see on television is the way to be. 
And he goes on to say some other stuff. And he says, in other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep doing what he's doing. Oh, listen to this. I left this out. I would convince the youth that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is fun, and what you see on television is the way it is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public and I could lure you into bed where there are diseases for which there is no cure if I were the devil. A nation that forgets God will be turned into hell. No morals. No spirituality. No God. Did not want to retain God in their knowledge. The song Brother Dave sung, written by Charlie and Ira Leuven years ago. The stories and pictures in most magazines now feature new stylings unfit to be seen. They're placed on the newsstand where children can buy. When they go wrong, do we wonder why? If we forget God, His mercy will flee, and sin will cover the land and the sea. If we forget God, Satan will rule. If we forget God, our nation is doomed. Why the attack on America? Because America is the front line for freedom. America has always been the beacon, shining light for a world to look up to, to want to go to, to aspire to. I'm not sure we have that many people anymore that think, you know, I want our nation to be like America. I'm sure there's still some. I'm not saying it's completely gone to hell in a handbasket, but it don't like much. We're certainly not the light that we once were. But we are still a light and I'd like to continue to be. Amen. But if America continues if America continues on the road she is, may happen in our day, may take a little longer than that. Mm. But it will be destroyed one way or the other. Yes, sir. We will find no hope in Buddha today. Come on. We will find no hope in Muhammad. True. We will find no hope in Allah. Right. Our only hope can be found in Jesus Christ. Amen. The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. In a dark and dying world, we need to be the light that God wants us to be. To continue to take the gospel throughout the world. Amen. You might say today, well, Brother Billy, you painted a grim picture. Is it too late for America? Was it too late at the Red Sea? No. no. Was it too late four days after Lazarus was dead in a doornail? No. no. It's not too late for America, but she must repent and come back to God. Right. It's not too late for the church. Everybody hollers about a world, you know, a revival sweeping the land. Yeah. The only way that's going to happen, it's not going to happen from a movie. It's not going to happen from a briefcase of some fancy preacher. Right. It's going to happen when men and women of God get on their knees at old-fashioned altars Amen. and cry out for God to move Amen. in the midst of His people. Amen. When people get on their knees and seek the face of God for the forgiveness and mercy for their nation, right. that's when revival comes. Turn from, their wicked ways. Turn from their wicked ways. We know this scripture by heart. Second Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, the fourteenth verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. It's not enough today to just have in God we trust written on our money. We're going to have to have in God we trust written on our heart today and written in every action that we take and begin to wear out the, the, the knees of our britches and, our, and, wear, and get calluses on our knees and cry out to God for salvation for lost souls and for our nation to turn back to God. For a nation that is on her way on her way to forgetting God. Right. And if she don't turn, she will burn. All right. Amen. Come on. We have enough. We have enough people that know the truth that can make a difference if they'll do something other than just sit on their hands. 
You can talk to people and they say, oh, I agree. Then they go on about their life and they never do anything about it. We need to reach the lost. You're right, brother. They go on about their life. They never do anything to help reach the lost. We need to do, we need to, 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 to do a greater work. We need to do more. Yeah, you're right. Then we shrink back into our shells and we do nothing about it. Come on, brother. It's time somebody did something about it. Yeah. It's time somebody sounded the alarm oh, yeah. and spared not and said, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. We need some John the Baptist. Amen. Oh, yeah. He wasn't fancy. He didn't have his hair smoothed down. He wasn't wearing no fancy suit. Matter of fact, he was, his diet was locusts and honey. Amen. Oh, he probably looked like some kind of wild man in the, in the wilderness with a voice saying, Prepare you the way of the Lord. Oh, Make his path straight. We need some old-fashioned preachers that don't care to sling a little snot. They don't care to spit a little bit. They don't care to get on their knees and seek God for what He wants them to have Amen. instead of reading the notes from some other preacher. Oh, come on, preach. We need some people that will get concerned about our nation. Yes. Amen. If we don't get concerned now, it'll be too late later. That's right, brother. It's time we got concerned about our nation. Today. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. It's time we stood up and pr proclaimed the truth yes. of God. Yes, put some wings on in prayer. So we see today why the devil wants to destroy America, and we see some of the ways that he's doing it. That's right, Brother Billy. And we realize that we, those Bible believing, did you know that someone posted, and I'm not sure if it's true or not, so I won't state it as fact, but I'm not surprised, and if it's not true, it will be before long. That whenever they put down the people you should be, groups that you should be aware of, mm. you know, that are dangerous, mm. people who take the Bible literally are on that list. Mm. Fundamental evangelical Christians yeah. that believe everything in the book, you might need to look, watch out for them. They might be oh, dangerous. Wow. I wish we were. <laughs> I wish we were dangerous. Mm. Amen. Amen. We might see desperate times call for desperate measures. Right. It's time we prayed a little harder. Right. It's time we sought God a little more. That's right, brother. Take a stand for what is right in a world that falls for everything that is wrong. Yes, sir. Repent, America. Before it's Come back late. to God before it's too late. Judgment must begin at God's house. Yes. We'll talk more about that this this next next week. Someone else have something this morning.